In this tutorial, we will upgrade the protection mode in our data guard configuration twice. Once to maximum availability mode, and then to maximum protection mode. And we will study how the primary database will respond in each case when the standby database becomes unavailable. We will work on the same appliances that we worked on in the previous practice. We are not going to perform major changes in those appliances. Therefore, no need to make a copy of them. The specifications of the data guard configuration are exactly the same as the specifications of the previous practice. No change is needed here. To get our practice environment ready, we have to do the following. First, in VirtualBox, open the two appliances in the folder Practice 3 Configure the Broker. Then start the appliances, start the databases, and make sure they are available. Just to save the time of this video session, I've already started the two appliances in VirtualBox and opened two putty sessions, one session connected to the primary database and one session with the green font connected to the standby database. And I started the databases in both systems. I don't think you will have any trouble to do that yourself. Now I will verify that the broker configuration is enabled and observe the protection mode that is being configured. As you can see, the broker is running and the protection mode is set to maximum performance. The transport service is running on the primary database. The apply process is not running in the standby database, so we need to start it up. Using SQL Plus, log in to the primary database and create the test update procedure in the HR schema. The code of this procedure is shown in the document. This procedure performs simple update statements on the hr.employees table. When you run it, you pass to it the number of update statements that you want to run against the table. At the end of its execution, the procedure prints out the execution time. We will use this procedure for this practice. Open two more putty sessions connected to the primary database system. One session will be used to monitor the alert log file of the primary database, and the other session will be used to monitor the broker log file. We will have a look at those sessions when we make changes on our configuration. Those sessions will give us an idea about what the database and the broker are doing in the background. Now, we are ready to start our practice plan. First, let's have a look at the standby database properties. You can see the net timeout is set to 60 and the reopen seconds is set to 300. We will modify the values of those properties.
I will upgrade the protection mode to maximum availability. Let's look at how the broker has changed the look archive destination to in the database side. You can see all the changes that I have made in the DGMGRL are implemented in the parameter. The sync attribute is configured and the reopen and the net timeout attributes have been changed to the values that we set in the DGMGRL prompt. Let's have a look at the broker log file monitoring session. You can see a log of the commands that we have run in DGMGRL command prompt. Now we will see how the primary database will respond when the standby database becomes unavailable. I will run the procedure test update in the primary database. Meanwhile, I will apport the standby database. Let's first run the procedure as shown in the code of step 11.1. It took 34 seconds to finish. I will execute the procedure again. And immediately after that, I will abort the standby database. You will notice that despite the standby database is down, the procedure execution finishes successfully and without any expected major delay. Keep watching the broker log file for a few minutes. You will notice that the broker keeps trying to reconnect to the standby database. Log in to the DGMGRL and notice the configuration information. You will see the errors returned by the command output. In the next step, I will start up the standby database and wait for at least 20 seconds. After that, I will check out the configuration again. DGMGRL will keep returning error for some time, and eventually you will see that the status of the data guard configuration becomes successful back again. We have seen that when the data guard is running in the maximum availability mode, if the standby database becomes unavailable, the primary database sessions proceed as normal. And meanwhile, the primary database keep trying to reconnect to the standby database. Let's now study what the response of the primary database will be when the data guard configuration is running in maximum protection mode. I will start with upgrading the data guard configuration to maximum protection. I 
I will execute the same procedure again and then abort the standby database. We will observe the monitoring session of the primary database alert log file. You will notice that the primary database hangs the current sessions and keep trying to reconnect to the standby database. Eventually, after about 4 minutes, it will give up and shut down. When the instance started to shut down, you will see a message in the alert log file similar to the one that is displaying in the document. After a few minutes, the standby database starts to go down by itself and you can see the expected message appearing in the alert log file. You will notice the session which was running the procedure has lost connection to the database. Now, if we want to bring the configuration up again, I should start the standby database first. When you do that, you will receive the error ORA01196 because the primary database is down. Ignore this error at this stage. I can start up the primary database now. After a few seconds, I can verify the configuration status. The configuration status is success again. So we concluded from this part of the practice that when the data guard configuration is running in maximum protection mode, if the primary database detects that the standby database is unavailable, then the primary database will hang the sessions and keep trying to reconnect to the standby database for short period. Eventually, if it cannot make the connection to the standby database, it will shut down. Now, let's undo our changes. I will set the protection mode back to maximum performance. Nothing is special about shutting down the system in this practice. As we have done in a previous practice, as we have done in the previous practices, you just turn off the apply process, shut down the standby database, shut down the primary database, and finally, as root, shut down both appliances. You shouldn't find any problem with doing that. Just please keep the appliance files. Do not delete them, because we will use them for future practices in the course. Thanks for joining the practice. I look forward to seeing you in the next lecture. Goodbye for now.